Hello everyone, welcome to our new SPI development tutorial series. I am Tuya from Hectalyzer team. In this very first video, we'll learn about introduction to SPI development. Okay? So, why we need to learn SPI development? As an information security professional, uh, we really want to know what is the actual SPI made by hackers. Okay, uh, we want to experience how hacker develop an exploit. Uh, Sometimes when we download the exploit code from the internet and we run against our uh, our target system and it fails, so we need to repair the exploit code from the internet. Okay. Sometimes we need to write the POC codes, uh, which is a proof of concept. Sometimes we find the vulnerability in our system and we need to write our own proof of concept code for this vulnerability okay so target group for this series basically for any individual who really want to know how i can make an exploit uh, penetration tester hackers and any individual in the information security field all right prerequisite uh, we have to know some basic information about assembly language. We need to experience uh, Metasploit and other automated exploit tool. We need to have the general ethical hacking experience and we need to do a lot of research. All right, so today's scenario. We have a machine running a Kali Linux and we have a, we'll use this machine as an attacker machine and we have the Microsoft Windows 10 32 bit version. Uh, in that machine, we have a third party FTP server running on part 21. So we'll use this one as a victim machine. So we'll find the vulnerability on that FTP server and write the exploit codes. Again, it's okay. So it's time for a demo. So let's go to our Kali Linux. Here is our Kali Linux. Uh, we use this one as an attacker machine. Okay. Here is our window machine. We ran PC man FTP server on this machine. Okay. Now the FTP server is online with the IP address 192.160.1. Okay. Go back to Kali Linux. Uh, first, we need to do pheasant attack to know where is the vulnerable point of the FTP server. So let's write our fuzzing script. So CD hectavisor. Okay, so pi. Okay, we, we rename this script as the xpy.py. Okay, let's write our script. First, declare the Python interpreter part and then input the socket library. My sock is a variable, and then we use the socket.socket .socket method. Socket.af and let's go inet for uh, IPv4 and then socket.sock string for TCP. Alright. And then we connect to the uh, FTP server using connect method. My sock dot connect one nine two one six zero dot one is the FTP server IP address, and then the port number. All right. Uh, and then we receive the banner information from the server using receive method. We receive let's just say 10,000 byte and then we need to send the username to the server so let's just use a variable username is equal first we will send 10 a so a into 10 and then we send using send method user and then our username 
and then slash r slash n which is a delimiter and then we we receive the stated message from the server okay and then we send the password password is let's say two ya okay slash r slash n all right and then we print what the server reply and then we close the socket Uh, okay, we need extra parentheses here. Alright, so let's save the program. Chain the permission to executable mode. And then let's run the exploit. Alright, here we go. Now, first FTP server is given as the banner of this server and then we send a username it's a username okay need password and then we send a password and we are not logging because we don't have the proper credential okay let's check the ftp server log first uh it, the our kali ip address is 192.160.254 and then we send a 10a and then we send our password and we are not logging all right So let's try with uh, some more payload, all right? Five thousand A, right? Save the program. Run the exploit again. Now the FTV server is uh, not reply with the status code. So let's check the FTP server and here we go the server is crash okay close the program okay uh, now let's open the application with the debugger to know what really happened in the background so a debugger is an application which we use for debugging other program or pro process uh, when we are doing exploit research and reverse engineering process so with a debugger we can see the stack uh, memory and register information and other disassemble information of a running program so in this video cd we'll using the immunity debugger which is free and we can integrate it with uh, many other python script uh, there are many popular debugger for windows like uh, WinDBG Win and OLE debugger. You can also use that kind of debugger also. Okay, let me open the immunity debugger. And then open our FTP server. We have four main parts in the debugger. The left pane here is the disassemble output of our FTP server binary. And this pane shows the CPU register, which is a very important pane for us. Left bottom, we have a memory dump of the program. And here is our stack pane. When we open a program with a debugger, it is automatically pause the program and wait for the user to start the program okay let's run the program here we go now the program is running the p the ftp server is online okay let's go back to the kali linux 
and run the exploit again here we go now the FTP server is crashed and then we see the register and other information in the background now we see we can control the EIP because EIP is uh, full with 4141 it is the highest value of the capital letter A okay now we know the application vulnerability and we put our data into the EIP the vulnerability field is the username field okay so let's uh, restart the program run the program again okay now the FTP server is up and running uh, for the second step we need to calculate the distance to the EIP we need to know how far we get to reach the EIP all right so EIP is a very important uh, it is the extended instruction pointer if we can control the EIP then it's basically say we can move our execution flow to our own malicious code or our own shell code so in order to search the EIP position we will send a well created pattern from Metasploit tool instead of sending a bunch of aids okay let's create a pattern using uh, Metasploit tool let's go back to Kali Linux let's open a new terminal okay let's go to the Metasploit directory USR share Metasploit framework tool exploit okay and then we need to use the pattern create script and then we create a 5000 pattern all right So we copy this pattern and then we put into our exploit code. right so let's save the program run the exploit again okay the server is crashed all right here we go now we have the EIP uh, full with this value now this value is the hex value of full character in our ASCII pattern we can find manually but I'll use the another tool called pattern offset in which we can find automatically where is the exact place of this value in our pattern let's go back to Kali Linux and then we use the pet pattern offset and then the as the hash value is 38 sys f4337 38 sys f four three three seven right all right so now we know after 2003 byte we have our EIP okay let's go back also we need to check the ESP which is the extended stack pointer which point to the top of the stack so now ESP here we go the top of the stack is the value of 70433070 okay let's check 70433070 okay let's calculate with the script ah so now we know it is a byte far from the EIP okay let's check let's go to uh, here we go 
Now the EIP is here 30XSF4337 and we have the 8 byte for to the top of the stack. Alright, so now we know the exact location of the EIP. So let's change our exploit code for better understanding. Exploit. Alright, so let's delete this line. Alright. So now we put our username username as uh, a into 2003 2003 by and then we also put for b for the EIP and then and we put 3000 C all right so let's save the program yeah. run the X now the server is not responding properly so let's check the server and we have EIP with 42, 42, 42, 42, which is our 4B. So we can check here. We have a bunch of A and then we have our EIP, which is 42, 42, 42. And then we have our C. All right. So all are running well. So let's go back to Kali Linux and change our exploit code now is the time to figure out how we can put our own malicious code or shell code into the application so let's first generate the shell code okay we are using msf venom for generating our shell code we can write our shell code manually but it takes time we'll learn about writing our own shell code in later video but for this video we'll generate our shell code from msf venom msf venom will use the hyphen p for payload window shell by tcp if we use this payload we will get the victim remote shell so, okay so and then we need to declare the victim architecture so, which is 32 bit so 886 and then we'll generate our payload in c format so minus f and c and then we need to declare the bad character so what is the bad character so bad character the character which will prevent our application execution flow so we'll learn more about bad character in the later video for now we'll use the command bad character set for the FTP server all right 0 D 0 0 a 0 0 and then F1 all right so 0 D is uh, is a return which is the slash r and 0 a is a line feed which is a slash n and 0 0 is a nav and f1 is the latin letter n all right okay now we got our shell code so let's copy this one and put it into our exploit copy and then okay let's put here all right so now we have our shell code but we need to go from eip to our shell code so we can put the ESP address into the EIP 
then it will be okay because EIP is also point to the next insertion so let's check the ESP address here we go the, the ESP address is start with the 00 if we put this ESP address into our EIP then our ex our execution flow will be stopped so for this video I will use the jump ESP method to jump our shellcode there are many methods we can use to jump our shellcode for example uh, like call EAH or SEH or pop return or push return we'll learn those kind of method in later video for now we need to find the jump ESP address okay so let's restart the program run the program alright so find the gem ESP instruction in our execute execution flow oh we, we cannot find okay we'll find in a, another executable module which are the important DLL running alongside with our application so I'll use this the last one which is the system DLL you can also use the third-party DLL if you want but uh, but uh, if you use the third-party DLL your exploit code may not run in other machine even if it is used the uh, same same OS platform so last one and then we'll search command jump ESP okay now we got our jump ESP address all right we need to write this one in reverse order because the 32-bit uh, application program used the little NDN format so we have big NDN and little NDN in this case we'll use the little NDN format so we need to write in reverse order so 7BC71477 okay let's put this address into our shell code seven B C seven one four seven seven okay so after that I'll put some no operation instruction so how about we put twenty not slats this is important because we don't know exactly where our shellcode is landing by using knob slot it is very safe for our execution flow all right now our exploit code is ready so let's save the exploit before i run the exploit let me check with the v10 machine all right now the uh, ftp server is app i'm running okay so let's open the network status state utility and then we don't have any part 4444 is opening okay so let's go to the Kali and run the exploit okay now the exploit seem working and then we'll check with the network status state here we go now we got the part 4444 is opening so let's verify from the Kali side. Let's open a new terminal. And then using netcat to connect the server port number 4444. Here we go. Now we got the remote shell from the written machine. All right. So, okay, let's close all this okay so all right so let's run the exploit again without the debugger okay so now the server is up and running run the exploit and then we connect back to the server with 
part number 444 here we go now we got the remote shell all right so let's go back to our slides all right uh, conclusion for the first module now we experience the real working exploit okay and sometimes the vulnerability of an application on our system may lead the attacker to take control of our operating system and other application so we should be aware of that okay so that's all for this first introduction video i hope you enjoy this and if you have any question or comment, you can send it to my email. And thank you for watching. See you in the next video.